Good morning, everybody. It's a great honor to be standing here, and thanks to FITI, NASM, and uh, English Red Tech for having me here. Actually, it is not 38 years anymore, it is 40 years. <laughs> But world is not necessarily cold. When we today ask any common man how he feels to be a citizen of this country, you see a sense of pride in their eyes. Even if you don't ask, they give you a lot of data. It's a world nation with the young population. Median age is just 28 years. More than 60% of the population is in income earning the age. Look at our per capita growth. Look at our market cap growth. Look at the way the number of trades and orders get processed in a day to day year. On and on and on it goes. That's on one side. And then you get a set of another players coming and telling you. It's very difficult. Too much of regulations. The pace of regulatory change is too much. Compliance has become a big burden. The cost of compliance is very high. This is another set. Is one another set. In minutes, you know what happened? An algo misfired and I lost money. Why retailers are trading algos? There has been such and such fraud. Such and such broker has not paid any money to his clients at all. If this is the situation, you know the regulator's job is not easy. The regulators have to balance all this. So many of the regulatory outcomes, many, I'm not saying all, because our regulators have been very proactive. Many of the regulatory outcomes are because of bad occurrences. Typically, a fraudster is always far ahead of the police. Why it is all happening? Is it the way the markets have been? Is it the way it works everywhere else in the world? Are we very unique? Are we making too many regulations? Everybody is calm, cool. We are in a spree of regulatory making, regulation making and making complaints difficult. What is changing because of which all these are happening? So for this we have to go to a bit of history. And today somebody asks you, how old is your market in India? Why markets? Because markets are there, listed corporates are there. Listed corporates are there, investors are there. Investors are there, products are there. Products are there, regulators are there. Regulators are there, regulation is there. Regulation is there, complaints is there. So markets in a way is a starting point. So where did it start? Maybe with the first stock exchange. When was the first stock exchange born? How people say some 1875? No, market started much before that. There is a book called Indian Securities Market by a person called Tadashi Endo. By the way, disclaimer, I am not related to Tadashi Endo. I am not recommending any of you to buy the books. Directly, indirectly, knowingly, unknowingly, I am not benefited if he sells more copies of books. Disclosures are very important. If you look at it, he talks about how stocks were trading in India before any stockbroker was born. Newspaper advertisements. 
One nice thing I saw in one of the advertisement in that book. The bidder's spread was 50%. That is, if somebody is ready to sell you at 100 rupees, they are ready to buy back from you at 50 rupees. It used to be called as a quote. People will never tell you whether they want to buy or sell. They will simply give you a quote. If you want to buy from me, pay 100 rupees. If you want me to buy from you, give it to me at 50 rupees. So why beta spread becomes important? So in a straight transaction, you can lose 50 rupees. If you buy from him at some price, that will be 100. You want to sell it back to him in the next millisecond. How much you lose? 50% of your money. So will anybody buy or sell? So if nobody buys or sells, will there be liquidity? If there is no liquidity, will there be investors? If there are no investors, can there be capital formation? If there is no capital formation, will there be growth in the economy? Right? So bid ask spread becomes a very important thing. Tighter and tighter it is, more liquidity, more capital, blah, 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 blah. Then somewhere between 1830 1840s, a group of people called themselves as stockbrokers. And they decided to start an association. Officially, that association appears to have born somewhere in 1875. At the point of time, opium, a wonder drug, was getting exported heavily from India. There was a good amount of foreign capital, foreign money coming in because of the exports. So people who were into it wanted to develop this place. This place was a bunch of seven islands owned by fishermen. So a lot of companies were born. Bad Bay Reclamation Company, Elephant Stone Company. Those company shares were getting traded. Life should have been very smooth, right? Bunch of investors, small brokers. All these concerns of surveillance, many of my surveillance colleagues are sitting here, should not have been there. Nobody would have known how to manipulate, right? Sorry. There were a lot of manipulations. There were a lot of issues. Markets were suddenly taken up, brought down. All things which you probably think of seeing today were not even in existence at that point of time. What was the difference? There was no regulator at that time. The sudden rise and sudden fall were there and the geopolitical developments leading to them were also there. World War II, the cotton war, Britain, America, you will be able to see all that very nicely described in that book. However much bad you could be, you would require somebody to regulate you because it is very important for yourself, your own safety. So it was decided that a committee will be formed. And a group was formed, it was called as Bombay Stock Exchange Enquiry Committee. Somewhere in 1922. We have talked about stock trading from 1700s. 1922, a committee was formed and an act was formed somewhere in 1925. The country permitted multiplicity of stock exchanges because there was a requirement in the law. A stock has to be listed in the regional stock exchange and another stock exchange. So there were many stock exchanges. So what? Let it be there. If you are sitting in Tamil Nadu and you want to buy some company which is listed in probably Gujarat, you will not be able to buy because it will not be available with you. So how the trading was happening? Why are we talking about all this? Because it is technology which was the root cause of all evils. <coughs> this is the technology which was the root cause of all growth. It was technology which is going to be there for a solution provider and this is a solution provider. You don't search for something which you have lost in a place different from where you have lost it. If technology started all this and if technology helped you to grow and make more money, technology will also help you to save yourself. That's why the role of red tech comes in. Multiple stock exchanges, multiple brokers, multiple scams. One day very innocently when I used to work in IDBA long before. I asked somebody, what is scam? They said, secretly carried away money. 
without anybody noticing if somebody pilfers from you, that's called as scam. So how it was happening? People conversed in a room, looked at each other and started trading. And in the process what happened? Somebody has to record it, there can be wrong recording. Somebody can say I never said this, there were fights. So when you buy something, you want to get it in your hand, otherwise you are not bought. When that used to happen, oh it can happen anytime. It can happen 20 days, 30 days, 40 days, 50 days. Why? Because the person who bought, if he does not have something to pay, then what will he do? Sorry, let us cancel the settlement. Or let us cancel the, let us merge it with the next settlement. When there is no finality, will anybody invest? If nobody invests, what's happened to liquidity? What happens to capital raising? What happens to economy? All we know. There was nobody telling what you should do. The first iota of a regulation came in form of Capital Issues Control Act. The purpose was very different. It was somewhere around 1947 this act was formed. Then in 1956 I think Securities Contract Regulation Act came. The purpose of an act is in the first line of the act. The preamble tells you. The preamble of SERA used to read to prohibit trading in options. So it was not market development. It was prohibit trading in options was the first requirement. <coughs> 1988 I guess SEBI was formed but it did not have enough regulatory powers. 1992 is when the act got formulated. In technology, when you have a problem, you will be asked to immediately find RCA, root cause analysis. What is the root cause of all this problem? The root cause is two people trade in a ring. Nobody knows what happens inside because others are not permitted inside. There is no transparency, therefore there is no trust. So people always felt when I went to sell to a broker, no, I got at the lowest price. Whenever I wanted to buy, it is always at the highest price that was published. So there was no trust. So what is the solution? Don't allow people to converse in a room and trade, no. Make it possible to trade sitting anywhere. It should be online technology. Technology was required to change the paradigm to take it to the next level. From a code driven markets was born, anonymous order matching online real time systems with the price at which the trade happened being displayed immediately and the price at which somebody is ready to buy or sell being displayed immediately. At that time, this was born in 1992, the word telecom was not coined. In our younger age, the subject used to be called as telephony. How am I telling this so clearly to you? What is not written in my CV but what is truth is, I started my career as a junior engineer in Madras telephones. There were two types of exchanges in those days. One was an electronic exchange, only one or two somewhere used to be there. Another used to be called as a Strouser exchange. Sorry, no electronic exchanges were there. Strouser exchange and crossbar exchange. In Strouser exchange, if you work, mostly you will become deaf after 5-10 years. Because the relays used to move. If you dial one, the first relay will move one step and touch the next relay. If you dial now 8, the next relay will move 8 steps. It's all connected by wire. So if there is a rain or thunder or uh, scorching heat, your telephone may not work. At that time was born 
anonymous order matching system which has to be online how was it possible technology we said technology so if i used to know who to whom i am trading i can assess whether that fellow will honor his commitment or not if i don't even know with whom i am trading how do i know that i will get what i have gone for you said you are bringing in a solution of preventing collusion through anonymity you have brought in an element of credit risk how do i manage it technology we will convert credit risk into market risk how we will find out what is the incentive to default for a broker and convert that as upfront margin how was it possible regulation what happened after that was an explosion market started growing up in a big way so then everybody should have lived happily there after no frauds everything fine everything all clouds were clean atmosphere good everybody went home and happily lived there after so that is only in fairy tale what is the next avenue where we can make a fraud if i print a note maximum in those days it could be a 1000 rupee note so cost whatever i incur for printing the benefit is just 1000 rupees but if i print a reliance shares share certificate or if i print a tata share certificate its value is much more than 1000 rupees so should i print, print a fake note or should i print a fake certificate better to go for the second one and somebody is telling that they are ready to give counter party guarantee then came again regulation and technology we materialize today can you think of a life without demilitarized shares can i hear an answer no no not hearing no but do you know what happened at the time people were all shouting against the regulators and market for introducing demilitarization unknown fear unknown fear of unknown we will have fear of known we will have fear of unknown we will have fear do you know what is making the markets bad two things fear and greed that's why every devi and every devta is having one varada mudra and abhay mudra you have greed varada mudra born giving you have fear abhay mudra don't fear come to me and that itself becomes a business subsequently <coughs> so what are, what am i trying to say whenever a regulation comes it's not necessarily only the unknown fear it is our some of innate nature to say this is all difficult this is all not necessary i have been living from my grandfather's great grandfather's age with this paper you want me to get it away how can i do it Every Diwali, I have to make puja to it. You are asking me to give it away. It doesn't work. You should emotionally understand. You don't understand the value of sentiment. You have to think practically. This all the advice we got. Believe me. So now you understand. Regulation making is not easy. You may have a foresight. You may tell that this is a good regulation. What people will immediately say? You are impractical. Because that's very easy to say. So then came the materialization. So then life should become easy. No. All manipulation should have gone away, right? Because it's all anonymous, order matching, so many things. No. Surveillance flourished in very uh, manipulations flourished in very many different ways. In fact, there were committees formed to study. how circular the trading was happening how an anonymous order matching system was nicely using to identify identities and trade 
again regulation and technology. It was stipulated that you should have an online surveillance mechanism. Technology came to the rescue. Online surveillance systems were born. Every single development has happened because of an experience. I can talk for one full day as to how regulations have evolved. I'm not seeing many old faces here. When we introduce derivatives, there was a concept of market-wide position limit which was put in place which is even today there was brought in. If the total market-wide position limit, market-wide position touches 80% of the limit, we used to have doubling of margin. At 90% tripling of margins. <coughs> and suddenly everybody will get disabled from the system. Huge furor that in itself is creating risk. A solution put in place became a problem. So, what are the principles? You will always detest regulation, it's one principle. Technology becomes a bone and a bane and therefore you should be continuously evolving. That's the second one. Third is every problem has a solution. Every solution will provide you a new set of problems. Yesterday we have meeting of some 40-50 members, around 200 people had come to meet us at BSC. It's a normal regular thing, voice of customer. You all have to do something about it. About what? How it is practical to have internal audit? You are asking us to do internal audit. You are asking us to give this. You are asking us to do this. You are asking us to return back the money every quarter and then take it back. Impractical. What is the use? What is the purpose? Sir? Hang on. Why this was put in place? You have to ask that, no? One another principle I can tell you. When an investor makes money, why he is making money? Of course he is very intelligent, right? He will go and brag to everybody. I was able to spot it, you know, and I correctly did it. I'm telling you, it's very easy. All that he will tell. If he loses money, why he is losing? Broker is bad. Exchange is bad. The regulators are not doing anything about it. The country is bad. Full of bad people. I'm the only innocent man walking on the street. Everybody is pouncing at me as to how they can steal from me. Am I telling something wrong? You are going to be blamed. That's intermediaries. So somebody is telling you, let me get blamed and then let me secure you by providing some regulations. But what is our immediate reaction? The regulations are all tough. Too many, too difficult. That's what we say. So what is the solution? Rectic. No choice. Lot many things and lot many areas, if you look at it, very proactively, technology is being today leveraged for the benefit of compliance of regulation. So let us understand, we have an inept, innate aversion towards any regulation. So whenever we feel this is very difficult, let us calm down and tell ourselves, maybe we should also rethink. So that's the first thing we should do. Second is, once we do that, we will realize, no, regulations are some way evolving because of reasons, not because <clears throat> Not because every day somebody wakes up from the day bed. Today what regulation I should make to make life difficult? Nobody wakes up in any dream like that and then come to the office to put more regulations. Everything comes for a purpose. And if it has come for a purpose, what do we do to leverage what we have? What is leverage? If you get more output with a smaller input, that is what you call as leverage. 
That's what technology is all about. That many things are happening. It's PRL filings. Single place you file for multiple stock exchanges. Easing out the pains of regulation in multiple ways. Standard forums, industry standard forums, committees, all the discussions are all happening for whom? For making compliance and life easier. Instead of complaining, we should become party to it. And we should start using technology in the best way as possible. <clears throat> I was talking with our uh, technology partners in this forum in the morning. RBA is in thought process of something, which I am sure many of the people who have worked in banks know. They say you create a server, in this now all the transactional data you just start pumping in, put a firewall. <clears throat> Give us access. You don't have to submit any report. We will fetch whatever we want. And if any of your data is wrong now, automatically we will tell you. In this place you have posted this is the FD amount, in this place you are telling this is the FD. Somewhere your arithmetic is wrong, we will be able to tell you. And we will take whatever reports we want to. And based on that, we will assess what is the risk-based supervisory framework for you. Then we will decide in what frequency we will inspect you. And then we will decide which of the areas we will see. <coughs> <Just> yet to, <coughs> I'm sorry for my bad throat. It's yet to get fully operationalized, but not far away from getting into operations. I'm sure this is what will evolve. Wait for the regulators to evolve it. Today you know what you have to submit to the stock exchange, submit to the uh, regulators, right? Go back and work on it. Why don't you create a server where from no, you will be able to generate whatever is asked for. Why, why don't you think of leveraging technology right from the point of origination till the point of ultimate delivery? The moment you do that, you will never grip of any regulatory change, 90%. Oh fine, it looks like a good solution, maybe costly solution, maybe a difficult solution, maybe a time consuming solution. So after that will life be okay? There will be no further problems, we will all sleep happily thereafter. Sorry, never that is going to happen. As I told, every solution provided can create a new problem. So what you should be worried about today, when you are talking of technology, regulation, compliance and all. Somebody called me three days before. He said, hey man, Sundar, you have become a celebrity. I said, what happened? Your fake videos are coming. The moment your fake videos are coming, you are a celebrity. If you are not a celebrity, why your fake videos are coming? Who is going to see it? What am I hinting at? In as much as technology provides you solution, it can create problems for you. So you have to be very careful how to safeguard from it. AI and ML, as much as they are evolving, they can also be areas where you need to be attentive about. What I am not telling is certainly not a fiction. Yesterday few of my employees came, Sir, did you send this message to me? WhatsApp message. I said, WhatsApp, what does it show? It nicely has this picture of mine as the display picture, DP. Not depository participant. <laughs> and it says, Hey, are you in your seat? The poor employee says, Yes, sir, I'm very much in my seat. <laughs> he is worried whether I am catching him when he is having tea in the canteen. What are you doing? I'm working, sir, that fellow writes. How do I know? I've seen the messages. Can you do me a favor? Then that fellow writes, Should I come up to your room, sir? No, 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 don't come. Can you please click the following link and order for me something? That is where the catch is. 
साइबर क्राइम्स और रियलिटी सो प्लीज डू नॉट कंप्लेन दैट यू आर आस्ट टू डू लॉट ऑफ वीएपीटी एक्सरसाइजेस इट्स नॉट फॉर नथिंग यू आर बीइंग आस्ट टू डू एनहांस योर टेक्नोलॉजी सिंपल थिंग्स लाइक टू फैक्टर ऑथेंटिकेशन व्हाई डोंट यू हैव इन एवरी प्लेस सिंपल थिंग्स लाइक व्हाई डोंट यू एजुकेट योर पीपल डोंट क्लिक ऑन लिंक्स don't share passwords hey what is your password i am not able to open it simple yeah same thing 1 2 3 4 no please don't do it so these are some of the areas where you need to be cautious i thought i should share some of this personal experiences of mine which i have seen in the last 4 decades hope you find it useful and hope you are able to leverage technology to your advantages to mindful of pitfalls and taking enough precautions for it i thank once again for the opportunity given to me and have a lovely day and interesting meetings thank you so much